ignoring this rock and roll stuff anymore. Every hotel and club in the country is wiring for information. Hello, Groove Dogs. Welcome to the Runaway Radio Rewind, a program that looks and listens back to the heyday of one of America's truly great radio stations, the legendary and late KLOL. It's the Runaway Radio Rewind. And now, Here's your host, Steve Robison. We are back. Thanks for joining us. It's the Runaway Radio Rewind. We spotlight the legendary radio station, KLOL, and uh, we all remember Outlaw Radio, right? Do you remember the first host of Outlaw Radio? It was Grega, and we got him. He joins us today, plus a classic Uncle Waldo for you. Enjoy the show and tell your friends, okay? Okay, so, Grego, what years were you at Rock 101 KLOL? I showed up at KLOL in 1989, and I was there until 1991. And then I was back again from 1995 to 1997, and then I was back a third time. From about uh, 1999 to 2000, 2001. And yeah, it was a three times in and out of there, believe it or not. Did you know that? I did not. I had no idea. Yeah. So what, what sent you away and brought you back? You know, the first time, believe it or not, there, there were several reasons um, that I left the first time, none of which make any sense in retrospect. And I wish the day that I had walked into your office and told you that I was leaving and quitting and es- essentially breaking my contract, <laughs> I wish you would have said to me, you can't leave. <laughs> because... In retrospect, I think it would have been a much better scenario had I stayed at KLOL. By the way, on the very same day that Moby was giving his resignation to you, I gave mine to you. You lost two guys in one day. Do you remember that? No, not in the same way. I walked into the office wow. and Moby was standing there. and He said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm... I'm actually resigning. He goes, I just quit too. <laughs> and I and had and had I had half a brain at that point, I would have realized, ah, this is opportunity. Yes, it sure would have been. Uh, so, uh, why what I- year was that? Was that after we were Rock Station of the Year on Billboard? I believe so. Uh, this was 1991 that I pulled up stakes and mm-hmm. left. And uh, I, if, if you really want to know the, the truth of it, you know, I had a ball in Texas. And uh, at that moment, I was young. Uh, I had great success gifted to me. Uh, you know, timing was right. Things took off. But the truth of the matter was, I missed my family. Mm-hmm. I missed my family. I was young enough to still be, I guess you'd say, somewhat homesick. I hadn't seen them. And there was an opportunity for me to try my hand at doing morning radio up in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And I took it, um, not realizing that what I was about to walk into was a whole different animal to learn how to do correctly. And I probably wasn't ready for that. But that's what made me leave, you know, Uh, probably a, a slightly bigger paycheck at the same time as well. Um, but yeah, that, that launched me into, uh, years of, uh, struggle, you know, to get back to, to H town really. So talk about the different periods of, of time, the 1989 to 91 period first Mm. at KLOL when it was billboards rock station of the year in 1990. Let me kind of encapsulate it for you. Um, My first memories of KLOL 
getting off the airplane at Bush Intercontinental Airport and getting into the program director's car at the time, Ed Levine, and coming down I-45, the first thing was listening to Stevens and Pruitt. They were on. And they had reached the portion of their show known as the sex survey hour of the Stevens and Pruitt morning show. And so I'm coming from the Northeast, and I've, I've listened to a lot of radio across the country, but Stevens and Pruitt were a very different flavor. They were unique and very Texas-centric and wild, way out there. You know, take Howard Stern, and they were on a par. They probably were doing Howard Stern's act before Howard Stern even knew that he was going to do that act. That's true, actually. <laughs> I believe that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, there was that. And then driving down I-45 and seeing the billboard, Corvettes were KLOL giving away Corvettes. Sign up. You know, this this rock station was the biggest living, breathing rock and roll behemoth that I had ever been a part of. And now I was going to be the night guy doing 7 to Midnight. And, and and the thing about KLOL at that moment in time is even though I was a, a decent on-air personality, you were compelled to step up and step onto the stage and be better than you knew you could be because you were working with people that were super talented, big time radio personalities. And I learned from all of them, Stevens and Pruitt, Dana Steele had her own thing going, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the music, the, the first lady of rock, you know, uh, Moby had his own, um, niche, if you will, with the good old boy public. Mm -hmm. He he served that role. Gregarious, super successful, having come from 97 Rock and his morning show. He was a big get for KLOL to have in the afternoon drive. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I remember the, the days of the, the back and forth, the egos between Stevens and Pruitt and Moby, there was a, there was a competition there. I'd like to say friendly, but not always. <laughs> and then here I came to do seven to midnight. So I realized that, you know, you're going to have to, you know, you have to step up and, and be better than you've ever been. Um, the, the station was on fire. KLOL knew, always knew how to put its face on to the public. It, it threw big events. It gave away great prizes. Uh, it played the best music in town. It was by far the rock and roll leader in H-Town that everybody chased and wanted, you know, was trying to nip at its heels. And it led the Houston listenership around from place to place with event to event, with giveaway to giveaway, from concert to concert. It was just, it was fantastic. And, and... You know, one of the things about KLOL is that you can't be successful on your own. You have to have a great team. Mm -hmm. And by that time, to your credit and the Joneses, you, you had put together mm -hmm. uh, quite a team that KLOL, above all, was a very successful business. And it was rocking. And it was great to be there. Um, now, as far as my part in, in at that stage, I show up, young guy to do nights, and I start doing a night show. And one day I get pulled into the office, uh, the first of many times being pulled into the office, although this time wasn't to be suspended or written up for any particular reason of what I'd done on air. This was uh, an idea session. And they said, we have this idea to do a morning show at night. And I looked at them, probably like a, a confused animal, you know, head to the side, uh-huh. And they said, we wanna call it Outlaw Radio. And I said, okay, what's Outlaw Radio? And they said, and I don't remember if you were in the room or not. And Doug Harris was there, I remember. And he said, we don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, they said, but you know, 
we're thinking theater of the mind, you know, uh, a lot of attitude, you know, duster, a duster, mm -hmm. and a hat, and boots, and, uh, you know, and I, I was kind of seeing it, but I didn't know. And again, this was another point where I realized that if, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to step into a role that I don't even know what it is and step up. And the, the way we left off was, well, think about it. Let us know what you, what you think, you know, if it's something you might want to be able to do. So I, I took a day or two, I think it might have been on a weekend, and came back on the, the following Monday and said, yeah, I, I've thought about it, and I, I'm not really sure. He's, well, the answer was, well, we're doing it. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm in. <laughs> Consider me in. And you'll be great at it. <laughs> Remember. So, yeah, crazy. Well, the images, see, the, the, the whole KLOL persona on air, the secret was, one of the secrets, is that you play it out in, in visuals, graphics, and images. And that's what the billboards were and the, and the, and the, all the images that, that portrayed outlaw radio visually gave it that support. And then you came in and paid it off on the air. Yeah. Yeah. It that, was, yeah. The mystique of it. That's right. Cause it was all mystique anyway. So you have to then live out the mystique between the records, which you did. You were the first outlaw yes i was and the show's motto had a couple of mottos it was uh outlaw radio after dark mm -hmm. so that was the seven and midnight show and then the other motto was breaking all the rules mm -hmm. breaking all the rules and uh i took that quite literally <laughs> Uh, and began to be a rule breaker yeah. a lot. Right. And I really enjoyed that part of the role. The impulsivity that was part of that show. I would do whatever I wanted to do as the urge hit me. Yeah. Some things were really great. Other things probably stunk. But we just tried it. We did whatever we wanted to do. But I made sure to include the listener. That, mm -hmm. If you want to know, in my mind, looking back, of, of what I believe the secret to Outlaw Radio really was, is that I gave the audience ownership of the program. This was their show. And the way I did that, I did that strategically by, you, you used to refer to me as Grego the head outlaw. Mm -hmm. I was the head outlaw, okay? Well, what I did was I used to, when the phones would ring and somebody would call, whatever their name was, it was so-and-so outlaw from the League City chapter yeah. of Outlaws. Right. So people felt, yeah. I made everybody feel like you're in, we're all in this together and you're representing this thing and KLOL where you are right now by blasting your stereo when I would launch into Led Zeppelin or whatever or the latest hair band, you know. So that was the secret of it. The magic was mm -hmm. we're a group. We're all outlaws. Who doesn't want to be an outlaw? Ooh, it was fun. <laughs> Grego, a classic. Hey, check out RunawayRadioRewind.com if you haven't already. It's now time for Uncle Waldo. Ready, brother, then run behind the curtain because well, look, you're look in at it. The, look at the spacesuit. Kind of a Captain Marvel. I love that spacesuit you have on. All right, you do the curtain. Hi Why? Hi Jeepers, you fine arts Get lovers, there. wherever you are, time to kick back and join those legendary Stevens and Pruitt, not ready for drive time players, starring in Uncle Waldo, teenage camper in the East Texas woods type person. Ah, uh, <laughs> Zach one, see one, and Uncle Waldo, Big Bruno, and Nymphia Scooter Pie are on a weekend camping trip in a cabin in the East Texas woods. Oh, they've just finished a big evening meal. And the discussion ensues about who's going to do the dishes. Let's listen. I'm not going to do them. 
Oh, I ain't gonna do it. Hey, Nymphia, you're the woman here. You do the dishes. You are to do the dishes. I am not about to do these dishes. I have two strong, healthy males yeah. here, and one of you guys are going to do the dishes. I got a great I idea. I ain't doing the dishes. Yes. Great I'm idea. A Watch. Yes. Let's make it democratic. Democratic. Let's turn down those damn crickets. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what. What? We're gonna do a little contest. It's fair. It's very democratic. Contest? What kind of a contest? Okay, we'll all we'll take off all of our clothes. Oh, that's a good contest, oh, yeah. Nymphia. Take off your clothes. Oh no, it's a trick. No, it isn't. Yes, it this is. This is a fair trick. You guys a contest. Are gonna... We'll take off all our clothes. Fair trick, see? You ah, slip. It's just a slip. slip. slip you did. ignorant bitch. <laughs> Uh, Waldo. I'm sorry I was going into another bit. But what we'll do is lay down naked on the floor, and nobody moves. You don't talk. You don't move. You lay there naked, and the first one to say something or move has to do the dishes. Is that you fair? Promise, you promise you won't move or talk or anything? No. You promise? And you can't either. Okay, then I'll take off my clothes. Oh, yeah, I like this contest. First one, first one to move, talk, or anything has to do the dishes. Yeah, damn All right, strip down. Here we go. Uh. Uh, meanwhile, in the vastness of space, beep, 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 beep. a lone spacecraft hurdles toward Earth with a strange alien at the controls. The alien's name is Karazadan Malkawan Karnak Buzdrak Romulak, which translates to Boner. Oh, he's a strange alien who survives on a diet of only Vaseline. Vaseline? What's this? The boner's been out of Vaseline for 20 days and 20 nights. There's only one thing to do. The alien beams down to Earth. Ah, son of a... He spots our trio lying naked on the floor. He says to himself, Wow, humanoids with the radio on. <laughs> They're all laying on the floor. They don't have any clothes on. I know. I think I'll go up to the blonde with the huge comets and I'll probe her. Jeez, I'll probe her brains out. Let's see here. Wow, she doesn't even move. Must be married. Our alien probes the blonde humanoid. After some good probing, he goes on to the big humanoid. Let's see, there's a large, large humanoid over here on the floor. Let me go over here. I think I'll probe him, too. Not very intelligent. Let's see. He doesn't move either. Very strange. Our alien probes the big humanoid. And then, before he can go to Uncle Waldo, he says to himself, Boy, 20 days and 20 nights without anything to eat. I sure am getting hungry. Before I probe the last short one over there, I wonder, Hey! Juvenoids, hey! Anybody got any Vaseline? Okay, that's it. Huh? I'll do the damn dishes. <laughs> You've been listening to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Join us next week for more memories and goodness for the intelligentsia from the people who made the former KLOL what it was. Find us online at RunawayRadioRewind.com and be sure to grab your Runaway Radio gear. You can find the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Show us your dog, and we'll see you next week on the Runaway Radio Rewind.